All right, this is another lesson. I don't know what is it with me. Um, I've been doing a lot of reading and um, using a lot of the books that I've um, have acquired over the years. This one is perhaps one of the best um, chord books I've ever used. It's um, I don't even know if it's in print anymore. It's by Ornie Burrow and it's a jazz and popular um, guitar. As you can see, this is pretty well horned up in the sense that this is um, ripping out. So this has a really good systematic approach to chordal theory. Um, I'd recommend it to everybody, if just put it that way. And realistically, if you're really into uh, playing jazz, I think the most um, important sections of the books are the just the studies on the jazz chords and basically, um, I guess, using inversions. So if you get this book, the beginning of it is pretty elementary, but starting on page, I think this is page 29, he starts off with jazz chords. It has a pretty systematic approach to it. Um, starts off with uh, dominance, major seventh, six, minor six, and minor sevenths, and then the inversion parts are really, really important. And it's gonna spurn a couple of ideas just in terms of doing some chord substitution and really mastering the fretboard and the, the fingerboard. Um, I was working out of the book today, and one of the things that I started thinking about was really about the two, five, one chord progressions, and more or less chords you can use to substitute the two, five, one chord progression. Typically in jazz, um, and I'm gonna go back, take a step back and try to make it as simple as possible. Typically in jazz, most of the chords are seventh chords and there are degrees of seventh chord. So if you harmonize your, 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 your scales, and by that I mean, um, if you take a look at the C major scale, it's, it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So going a little bit slower, each of the notes corresponds to uh, a chord and a Roman numeral number in jazz. So the one is the tonic. In the case of C, it's a major seventh. And that's a C major seventh. The second um, note is a D. That's always a minor seven, typically. That's a D minor seventh. The three is an E. That's always a minor seventh. The four is a major seventh. In this case, it's F, F major seventh. The five is always a dominant seven. That's G. That's a G dominant seven. The six is an A, and that's always a, a minor seventh. Running out of real estate here. The seventh is a B. That's always a minor seven flat at fifth. I smile because that's my favorite chord. Back to the one, which is a C major seventh. So the scale itself harmonizes C major seventh, D minor seventh, E minor seventh, F major seventh, G dominant seventh, A minor seventh, C minor seventh, five fifth, back to the one chord. And you can play around with this. Arpeggiated. Now, getting back to the 2 5 1 chord progression, all you're doing is taking the second chord, which is in this case is a D minor seventh. Go into the fifth chord, which is a G dominant seventh, and back to the one chord, to the C major seventh. So, 2 5 1 chord progression in the key of C major seventh, or key of C major, is D minor seventh, G dominant seventh. C major seventh. Now you wouldn't really play it like that in the real context of jazz. You'd probably change the chords and you wouldn't be moving up and down, but this is pianoistic and it's very linear for you to try to grab the root, which is on the A string in this case. So I'd probably play it like this with leading notes. So that's my three note chord, C minor seven, D minor seven to G dominant seven. 
there's three notes and back to the C major 7 so it looks like this you can keep these as three notes too so D minor 7th G dominant 7th C major 7th the interesting thing about this, and a long the way of saying explaining this, is you can substitute all of those seven chords with nine chords, and it'll make sense. So this D minor seventh, you can substitute it with a D minor ninth. This dominant seventh that I played here, I can play like this. I can just add a ninth, which is the A in this case. And if you ever wanted to know a cheat. A cheap way or I should say an easy way of um, figuring out what the ninth chord is the ninth is always just a second degree of the 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 the, the scale um, that you're using or at least the chord the chord that the chord chord name so in this case it's a G7 and if you were to play the G scale not the C scale because remember that's a G7 the second note is an A it's the same as the ninth if you counted up ninth to ninth degrees of the scale you get the same note so if you did a G major scale one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's an A. Now just did, just hit it here. So that's when you add a ninth. I just added the eighth note to that. So I'm going back to this. It would be instead of D minor seventh. Hit a D minor ninth instead of G seven. Hit ninth, and instead of a C major seventh, hit a C major ninth. So. So that's a quick way to kind of add a little bit spice and flavor to your two five one chord progression. So instead of just go, all right. Hope this helps you. Thank you.